All right, I'm going to show you a video on changing front brake pads. This is going to be on a Lexus SC430. There is a certain style brake pad that I couldn't find much information on that Lexus has. It is a very heavy taper on the pad. You will find this on GS's and also other models. As you can see, they've scalloped, or I believe they call it a J-cut, on the pads. These are factory Lexus pads. These happen to be 04465-22312 pads. But I know the uh, GS's and some of the others have converted over to these as well. The biggest thing to remember on these is the taper goes down when your caliper is in the back. It's going to be actually sitting in there this direction with the taper down. I'm gonna, I already did one side but I'll show you a full side. Pretty quick job. No other items to really worry about. Let me set the camera up here. I'm just going to finish pulling the wheel off. I've already got the tools out I need. Let's get the caliper pulled off. The caliper mounting bolts are 13 millimeter. This car hasn't been driven in the winter, so it's actually a pretty rust-free car. It is a 2003. pad holder they had some squeal stop on them it was stuck to the caliper make sure you look at that and don't double them up if you bought new shims video got two pad retaining clips these were aftermarket pads so they don't have the big taper on them I just use big channel locks. I use a pad because it's a double piston. That way you can compress both at the same time. You could use a C-clamp or a pad spreader. It's done. Set this off to the side where it's not putting pressure on the hose. Change over to a 17 millimeter. So you can pull the pad holder off. Caliper mounting bracket.
Both bolts, same size, same on the caliper. My rotor did come right off. Really nothing wrong with these except for it sat outside for several days or a week maybe. The customer probably left it, didn't drive it for a while, and the pad rusted up a spot on the rotor and creates a uh, pretty bad pulsation when you're driving. Um, it's hard to get rotors cut of any quality anymore, so I'm just replacing the rotors and doing the pads while I'm at it. All right. If that's stuck on, usually I hit it in the backside with a hammer a few times on the surface. It'll pop off. If this is rusty, you should clean it up and put some light lubrication on there just to keep it from rusting again. This is probably the most important part of the whole brake job. I don't have a lot of rust on this car, but if you did, right down in here, these surfaces get rust built up on them. If you don't grind that back down to the actual original metal, that's what causes brake pad wear problems, sticking brakes, all kinds of other issues because it reduces the clearance when the rust builds up underneath the clips. If you don't take the clips out and clean it, it'll build up under there and it closes the space and the pads will either not come out or they'll be hard to go in. When you press the caliper, the pads won't slide freely and that causes uneven brake wear where a pad's stuck against the rotor because it won't release. Or you get poor brake performance because it can't actually push it in evenly to brake properly. So make sure that you take a wire brush or wheel, or I usually take a, a grinding wheel right to it and take it right back down to the bare metal on all four surfaces. I usually put hardware on, but Toyota factory pads don't come with hardware. This isn't rusted, so I'm going to reuse it. These are pretty clean, so I'm just going to clean them up with my wire brush. Top and bottom surface, make sure there's no rust on the bottom either going back in or that'll create a problem just like rust on the bracket. <laughs> Always take a touch. This is dialectic paste. Um, you can use brake caliper grease, any NICs, anything like that will work. I just put a very light coating on the metal itself before I slap the pad retaining clips back in. What that will help, especially if you're in wet or, or salty climate like I am, it will keep that from rusting again is quick. You'll actually find your brakes will last a lot longer and stay rust free and looser better because that won't allow the rust to grow back as quick underneath. Make sure you do tops and the bottom. Just a little. You don't want so much that it's squeezing out and getting on the brake rotor after. Just a thin coating on all the surfaces. Alright. This is the next thing. Make sure these are free. 
twist them a little. They'll usually be a little sticky, but they should move in and out nice and free, not binding. If these are frozen, again, the brakes aren't going to work. This is what your caliper rides on. As you push it, the caliper moves in and out with these bolts. That's what it's actually screwed onto. So if these are set up solid, it's never going to work right. Make sure they're free. It is just a boot. You can peel the boot off. And they'll pull out. You can re-lube them, clean it if you can get it cleaned out inside if it's rusty. Put some more lubricant if the boots are ripped and that's why it got rusty. Make sure you replace the boot. They just snap back on as easy as that. I keep them pushed in so I can put the caliper back on. At this point, we're all set with the holder. This one's pretty cleaned up. Again, go light here. If you get too much grease and it gets on this flange, your rotor's not going to sit flat against there if you got a big wad of grease under there. Just enough here, because I'm in a rust area, to keep it from rusting or seizing up. Let me get my rotor. I've already cleaned the rust preventative off the rotor. Just use brake clean right off the shelf and a paper towel when you get them out of the box. You usually got a film on them to keep them from rusting. Spray them with brake clean, wipe off both pad surfaces, and they're good to go. These holes here, I don't have the rust problem here, and the rotors that were on there had multiple holes. But try and put your rotors on the same position they came off before. What you'll find in rust prone areas is rust has settled in on this hub in a certain spot. So you should either wipe that or grind it, clean it off to make sure it's not a raised surface. If you turn this and put it onto a spot where there's a big round rust spot here, it's going to tip that rotor out a couple of thousands. It will make a difference. So make sure you either clean it down here smooth if it is rusted or make sure you line that hole back up with the spot where you can see where it was. I'm clean here so it's not going to make a difference which hole I put it on. It fits loosely, just let it hang there until you get everything together. Two mounting bolts. Usually have to hold the caliper bracket and the rotor at the same time just till you get it lined up. Otherwise that will want to tip and it tips your bracket and then the threads won't go in. Always hand start all the bolts. I do use a impact wrench usually and or air ratchet. I'm just not doing it today to show you guys it's just as easy with hand tools. Just tight, give it one little extra pull, make sure there's no extra grease stuck on the rotor, make sure everything's free. Now, find my new pad set. This is where we'll see the taper here, and the taper on the front will fit on the back side. The sounder should be on the back side. The one without the 
sounder for the brake pad where it goes on the outside. They have to be matched. This one will be here, this one will be on the outside. The two chamfers are both on the bottom and the pads are facing the correct direction. Now I do need to change those clips off. Mine are in good shape. You can buy new ones if yours are all rusted. They just pop off. I will put a little anti-squeal on it just to hold it in place. Don't need much, just a dab. It simply slides over on the pad and taper down. Slide the pad in, you'll be able to see this a little easier. This uh, shim got bent a little because it was stuck to the caliper. The single goes to the inside. You'll actually, this one doesn't have it on the outside, but there's a little cutout in the pad and that one fits right in the center of that cutout and just sticks on there. It's free floating so it moves around. Again, the cut's going to be on the bottom. Simply slide it in. Now both pads are in place. I can take my two clips or springs there's holes already drilled on the backs of the pads. You simply put it in each hole, squeeze it together. Sometimes that'll actually push the pads out and you'll have to hold them in while you're putting the caliper on. These are in there pretty firm. Make sure you do not twist the hose on your brake caliper. I've seen people set it down and pick it up and they set it back down it'll fit but your hose is all twisted up and it's going to create problems when you turn or in distance when you're making a turn it may actually shorten it and break your hose or over time could cause a, a braking issue or a pressure issue also slide your caliper over with everything all undone should slide right over this is where you want to make sure those two mounts in the back for your screws are in hand tighten, change back over to a 13 millimeter, oh sorry it is a 14, 14 millimeter. Alright, hand tight and then just one more little tug. Make sure everything's free. That's basically the entire brake job. You do that on the other side in reverse order. You'll be done with the whole brake job in an hour and it'll be done right. Just make sure you clean up those slides where the pads go into those caliper holders. That's the most important part of this whole brake job. Um, when you get in, the calipers have been compressed. Make sure you press two or three times on the brake pedal. It'll go down towards the floor until that piston is pushed back out touching the rotor. So just make sure before you go and back it out of the driveway, get it off the stands. Make sure that you press that brake pedal two or three times to firm it up. Be good. Put the wheel on, torque it down, and good to go. Thanks for watching.